Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Dohid, and today we are here with a very confusing topic, case series. Case series. What is case series? How do you differentiate case series from other study designs? This is one of the most challenging questions and most confusing questions, especially for new researchers. And in this video, we'll talk about what case series is, what are the types of case series, how you can differentiate case series from other kinds of study designs. If you understand this concept, you will never ever have any difficulty identifying case series or any other study design as well if you focus on exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video. So what is case series? Remember, case series has another name, clinical series. Yes, as the name suggests, it's a clinical series, so it will be more useful for healthcare students or healthcare researchers, medicine researchers or nurses or anyone who is related to patient care in any way. Case series or clinical series is a study design for those researchers and students. So what is a case series? Let's, let's start with the definition. What is a clinical series? What is a case series? Case series or clinical series is a study design and it is present on the study design pyramid. If you see the picture of the study design pyramid, you will notice that case series is there right next to case reports or case studies. So how do we differentiate? So what is case series? Remember, first of all, it is a descriptive study and it is an observational study. Yes, I do know that in the observational studies, we usually count cross-sectional studies, case control studies and cohort studies. But here I'm letting you know again that case series is also observational study. It is also an observational study, and it, but it is a descriptive study. It is descriptive in nature. What do we mean by that? What we mean by that is that it, this is observational. It means that the scientist, let's say you are a scientist and you are conducting a case series. So you don't have a control group. You will not have a second group. So you cannot analyze. You cannot do an analy analytical study. You usually just describe whatever you see. This is a descriptive study and you cannot do anything you cannot provide any intervention you cannot manipulate the environment because it is an observational study you just observe what is happening so this is a definition of a case series or clinical series that in case series you observe a group of patients remember this is very important because it is related to healthcare so it is a descriptive study an observational study in which you observe a group of patients you don't do any intervention you don't give any intervention you just observe now how do we differentiate it from others we'll talk about that but let's talk about the types of case series yes there are different types of case series one of the most common types is consecutive versus non-consecutive consecutive case series is that whatever patients you identify you include them in your study non-consecutive is you don't include all the patients you become a little choosy so that will be non-consecutive now another type would be prospective and retrospective just like prospective cohort and retrospective Perspective cohort in case series you will either go into the future or you will go into the past and we'll talk about that in this video we'll talk about that we'll go into the detail and we will discuss that now so we know what is a case series we know the types of case series but we don't know how many patients we will have in case series right so let's let's start with case study first you need to understand what is a case study remember case study is when you are studying one person or place or a thing or you can say one unit when you are studying one unit it's a case study and it is also observational so usually you have patients you're looking at those patients some intervention a rare intervention or some any or some intervention on a rare patient was done and you are now looking at the patient and you are extracting the data the report and now you have the report with multiple sources of data that what exactly happened with this patient so this is one patient case study is one patient now case study can be single case study and multiple case study yes it can be of two types single case study means as the name suggests when you have one patient so simple say simple case study is a single case study now multiple case study there is no established definition or i would say there is no mutual agreement or no mutual consensus by the scientist how many people should be there in multiple case studies and how many patients or people should be there in a case series or how many patients should be there in a case series so after studying a lot i have come up with numbers and you can use those numbers although that is not a rule but i would say just consider it as my rule and you can use the same rule my rule of understanding case study is when you have one person one patient that's case study when you have between two to four 
patients. It's a multiple case study. Now, when you have four plus from four to 10, it's a case series. Yes, I know there are case series where you have 20 patients, 40 patients, 50 patients, 100 patients, even thousands of patients, 6,000 patients. Yes. There have been case series like those, but I'm letting you know that just consider that if you are conducting a study design, your patient should be between four to 10. That should be easier for you to understand that, okay, case series has four to 10. So just remember case series will have four to 10. That's my definition four to 10 patients, multiple case study will have four patients up to four patients and single case study as the name suggests will have one patient. Now case study is when you have multiple sources of data. So in single case study and multiple case study, you will have multiple sources of data in case series. You also will have the multiple sources of data and you have one group. So between five to five to 10 patients, right? So you have those patients. So you have one group. Now, what exactly are you looking at? Why do you collect those patients? What exactly do you want to see? What do you want to study? Why do we do case series? Remember, we do case series to see the experience of these patients, what they go through. That's number one. Secondly, we look at the effects of an intervention. Yes, this is very important. We look at the effects of an intervention that was done before. Before you started, there was an intervention that was done. Remember, you did not do any intervention. You were just observing because if you had given that treatment, it would have been a clinical trial. It wouldn't have been an observational study because that's the major difference between an observational study and a clinical trial. Because in clinical trial, you do an intervention, but in observational study, you just observe. And here you are just observing intervention was already done. Treatment was already given. Now you want to see the after effects of that treatment what happens and when will the events happen when will this intervention give an outcome when will the outcome show up when will you see the outcome when will you see the effects so you are looking at the experience of the patients and you are looking at the effects of an intervention or also sometimes a risk factor an exposure you're looking at the effects of an exposure and you see what will happen now this is clear now we know why do we do the case series we know what is case series. We know how do we differentiate the case series from case study and multiple case studies. Now, the main difference is now, how do we differentiate this case series design from other kinds of study designs? Because there is so much of confusion and there are so many similarities. For example, cohort studies. How do we differentiate a case series from cohort studies? So let's talk about this. So as you can see in the study design pyramid, we have cross-sectional studies, we have case control studies, and the topmost in the observational studies is the cohort studies. Of course, it is after clinical trial, but in the, in the observational studies, that's on the top. So in our observational studies and cohort studies, you go into the future and you have two types, prospective and retrospective. In case studies, you also have prospective design or retrospective. You can either go into the future or you can go into the past. So how do we exactly differentiate? Now, remember in cohort studies, you do the sample selection or the sample or the sampling is done on the basis of exposure. So you usually have two groups, exposed and unexposed. But in case series, you only have one group. So now it's easy to understand and differentiate, right? In cohort study, you have two groups, exposed versus unexposed. But in case series, you have only one group, right? That's one difference. But there is a problem. There are some, uh, some cohort studies in which you only have one group, only the exposed group. So how will you differentiate? Remember the outcome and the sampling. Remember, that's the basic rule I'm telling you, that the sampling in case series is done on the basis of outcome that you collected patients, but first you identified the outcome and you collected those patients based on the outcome. And it can also be done, the sampling can also be done on the basis of outcome and exposure both. But outcome will always be there. In cohort studies, the outcome doesn't have to be there. You don't need outcome. The sampling is done on the basis of exposure. If you have two groups, it will be done between exposed and unexposed group. If it's only one group, it will still be done on the basis of exposure. So exposed group will be there. So now this is the main difference. Now, second difference is cohort study is usually a huge study. A lot of patients are there. But again, in case series, we have seen some people have done case series with a lot of patients. So now there will be a confusion again. So remember, the main difference will always be the sampling. Number of patients doesn't matter, but usually cohort studies are a big cohort and cohort studies are long studies. They last for years, one year, two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years down the line. There are studies that are still going on for past 50 years. So cohort study can be that long, but case series doesn't have to be that long. You follow up and just look at 
for next six months, probably a month, six months or a year maximum. But case studies doesn't have to be that long. So this is the main difference that the case series is a short study is easier to done. It's a short study with lesser patients, five to six, five to 10, as I said, but cohort study is long. Cohort study is long. It lasts for years, 50 years, 40 years. And the sampling is done on the basis of exposure. So that's the difference between cohort studies and case series. Now, the second kind of study design in observational studies you see is the case control study. Now, in case control study, you go into the past. In case series, you usually go into the future, but it can be prospective and retrospective both. In retrospective study, you will already have the outcome. You will already have the exposure, uh, the, the treatment done or the exposure done, the treatment usually, and you already have disease patients. So you included those patients. So in case control study, you do the same thing. So what is the difference? You are going into the past in both. If it's a retrospective case series, you are again going into the past, just like case control. So what is the difference? Remember in case control, you always have two groups, cases and controls. You cannot have a case control study without a control group. So that's the major difference between case control study versus a case series. If it's retrospective in retrospective case series, you go into the past, but you only have one group and sampling is always done on the basis of outcome. And in case control, the sampling is again done on the basis of outcome. That's a similarity. So that's why many people can confuse this. But after this differentiation, you will never, ever have any confusion that case series has only one group, but case control has two groups. Sampling is done on the basis of outcome. So that's the similarity and differences between case series and case control study. Now, the next one is the cross-sectional study. So how do we differentiate between a cross-sectional study and a case series? Because in both, we, we have one group now. In cross-sectional study, we have one group, right? But remember, there are cross-sectional studies with two groups. Yes, there have been studies. And I have seen a study that was actually a cross-sectional survey study, but they had two groups. So yes, you can have two groups, but let's say there is one group. So how do you differentiate? Remember, cross-sectional doesn't have to be patients. Case studies are always patients. The sampling was done on the basis of outcome. You always have patients in case in cross-sectional you don't have the patients always. And in cross-sectional study, you look at the prevalence of a study. You look at the prevalence of a study and it is also known as snapshot. It can be cross-sectional. The survey study can be cross-sectional. That means what is happening at one point in time. And it can be longitudinal that what happens at multiple points in time. So that's why because of multiple points in time, when the survey study is a longitudinal study, people can confuse that with case studies. But remember in case studies, you have patients and you don't look at the prevalence. You look at the after effects of a treatment or an exposure that when the events will happen but in cross-sectional or longitudinal survey study you don't look at it you look at the prevalence of a study you consider it like a snapshot what happened at one point in time or what happened in multiple point in time the prevalence of an of an issue of a problem of a disease so this is a difference between different kinds of study designs and case series but now one design is left retrospective cohort and case series retrospective let's say if we start a case series when everything is done the treatment is done already the disease patient were there you collected disease patients you have the intervention done already of course when you started and the outcome of the treatment has already happened so you are starting the study now so what is the difference between retrospective cohort and retrospective case series remember again the sampling sampling is done on the basis of outcome in case series yes i do know sampling is done on the basis of outcome and risk factor together as well but remember it's together you never will have case series without an outcome based sampling so this is how you differentiate between the cross sectional study and case series, case control studies and case series, cohort studies and case series, and case study, single case study, multiple case study, and case series. Now, one study is left, the major one, clinical trials or the interventional study. So here we are in case series looking at the after effects of an intervention. And what do we do in a clinical trial? We do the same thing. We do exactly the same thing. We do the study of the intervention, a medication. What will be the after effects of a medication? So what is the difference? Remember, in case series, the, the intervention was already done. You did not give the intervention. In clinical trials, you will give the intervention. So that's the major difference. The moment you give intervention, it becomes a clinical trial. And clinical trials are of two types, randomized and non-randomized. Randomized will have two groups. But here, in case series, you don't have two groups. Or you can have three groups too in clinical trial. You, have, you can have multiple groups. But what I'm saying here is that you will not have one group in clinical trial if it's randomized control trial. But you will have one group if it's a non-randomized control trial. Now, if you have non-randomized control trial, you have one group Let's say you have seven patients and you are doing a non-randomized control trial with a medication, with a treatment on these patients. Now, why it's not a case series? 
because you are giving a treatment. So that's why it's not a case series. It's a clinical trial. But remember now, one more thing about case series. Case series can be a precursor to any of these study designs. Once you have this study done on the same patients, you can do a clinical trial. You can do, give a medication now and you can do your clinical trial. Yes, so all of the study designs we have mentioned case series can be converted into any of those study designs with the same patients you can do a cross-sectional study with the same patients you can do an observational study like cohort retrospective or prospective with the same patients you can do a case control study with the same patients you can do a clinical trial randomized and non random so this is what a case series or a clinical series is and that's how we differentiate between the different study designs and case series now let let me quickly rephrase once again what we have learned today the case series is also known as clinical series it's a description descriptive observational study that means you don't give any intervention now case series is of different types mainly consecutive and non-consecutive consecutive means whatever patients you have you just whatever patients you identified you just included them in your study and it can be retrospective or prospective that means if you can go into the future to look at the outcome or you can go into the past when everything has already happened so yes they can be of these types now the next thing we discussed was that how many patients do we need to have in a clinical series or case series remember it's a patient study so you will have patients but how many four plus more than four up to ten and that's my definition i know there are people who have done case series of multiple patient patients 50 60 maybe thousands of patients as well and they call this case series but today i'm giving you a definition and you can use this definition that okay we will keep our case series up to 10 patients plus four plus up to 10 like for example five to ten so you can say five to ten and now we, we discuss the differences between case study and case series remember both have multiple sources of data case series have one group only case study have only one patient and you study every possible thing about that patient multiple sources of data but case study can be of single case and we call it a single case study or multiple case study single case study has one patient multiple case study uh, or multiple case study will have between two uh, i would say between one to four between one to four so you have four patients if it's four plus up to ten then it's a case series now case series has only one group so now when you have one group you can confuse it with cross-sectional but remember cross-sectional study is for prevalence so you just look at the prevalence of survey study you give surveys but in case series you don't give surveys you are looking at the after effects of an intervention that was already given and now you how do you differentiate between case study and cohort studies and case series the sampling the sampling in case series is done on the basis of outcome in cohort it is done on the basis of exposure in case control the sampling is done on the basis of outcome just like case series but the difference is the number of groups in case study you have two groups but in oh, sorry in case control study you have two groups case control we are talking we are talking about in case control you have two groups but in case series you have one group now you are studying intervention but why is not a clinical trial because you are not giving an intervention in clinical trial whether randomized or non-randomized you always give the treatment you manipulate the environment but in case series you don't case series is an observational study design so this is it for the most confusing study design i hope you have understood this video and you have enjoyed today's session as well so watch this video again rewind it play it again take notes notes until you understand it you will have to watch it multiple times to understand and grasp this concept so make sure you watch it again and again until you grasp the concept and once you have understood everything and you still have any questions please do comment below and i'll get back to you and reply to your question as soon as i can thank you for watching keep learning keep watching